Sisters TV. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. Uh, I got a little throwback for you here tonight. I think you're going to like this. Back in 2017, when you had a host of fresh-faced new hosts, myself, Donnie Cody, and the incredibly bright and wonderful conversationalist, Melissa Royal, Melissa did a full-length interview with three absolute legends, all the gentlemen from Buddy Wass's name and the other fellas. However, I mean, we still have a use for this because I don't know if you heard this or not, but Buddy Wass's name and the other fellas were just announced as recipients of the Order of Canada. And if you don't already have in your head that that's a really big deal, just Google that and look at the list because it's a really big deal. So what we're going to do tonight is just relive that moment back from a few years ago when Melissa Royal was right here in this chair talking to a couple of Newfoundland legends. Enjoy. We're here with Wayne Chalk, Kevin Blackmore, and Ray Johnson, also known as Buddy What's His Name, the other fellas. Guys, thanks for coming. Oh, yeah, you're more thanks for having us. Thanks, girl. Melissa. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Nice to be here. So you're in St. John's. You're doing a string of big sold-out shows. Uh, you've got the new DVD out. What's coming up? What's next for you guys? Oh, well, we've got a tour. Well, this tour is an 18-month <coughs> tour. So we've got a loop in March, which goes into Ontario. And then we've got summer gigs, which are going to be June gigs in, in Carboneer and Marystown and several other Newfoundland places. Uh, we might even be doing the um, St. John's Folk Festival this year. Oh, I think I can let that out of the bag. And breaking news. Heard breaking news, yeah. <laughs> and then in the autumn, we got to go do the uh, Alberta run and the Maritime run. So all of that left to do on this best of tour. Like it. And so this concert DVD, is this yeah. from last year's? That's the last, last year's tour. Yeah. That, right was, that was recorded in March in Edmonton. We were out there touring, and uh, one of our stops was four nights in Sherwood Park, best old place theater. And so we got a video crowd to come in and shoot that and put it together. And we released it around a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So it's great. It's an hour and 48 minutes, and it is the last show that we did. You know, this one is the best of. That one was the last laugh. So that's the last laugh show. So cool. Wonderful. I saw the concert uh, in person, but now I'm going to have to check it out Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on screen. So you mentioned you're going um, back to Ontario and, and Alberta, yes. and you've done yes. lots of... Um, Lots of shows, of course, all across the country. And I know you're often really gracious with your time and come out and meet your fans afterwards. Yeah. What are some of the stories people have told you about what it means to see you uh, perform when they're from Newfoundland or, or kind of missing home or have that connection? You want to hear a few, do you? <laughs> <laughs> What's the best one? I'm sure you have a hundred. Oh, Every night so someone has given us extra validation to carry on. <laughs> Every night someone comes up and requests that we never stop this. Mm. Yeah. Every night we get yeah. that feeling like this is a vital service to humanity. <laughs> <laughs> right. And all we yeah. started out to do was play some songs together. You know, we yeah. were, were all finished uh, performing publicly. And we just started to play together for personal enjoyment, you know, and it just sprung from there. And, uh, and it's kind of nice that it's, if you want to use the word organic, right? <laughs> it's kind of nice that people appreciate it and, uh, and tell us so. So it's... Uh, Every uh, now and again, you know, someone sends you a particularly poignant piece of correspondence and some years ago. We had a woman contact us. At the time, we had put up on TV, this is back before email was very common, of course, and it was a letter that came. We had put up on TV uh, the 1993 special, up along with Buddy What's His Name and the other fellows, and this woman wrote us to tell us that she had come from the hospital where she had been tending to her son, who at that time had leukemia, and she was seeing his son through an awful hard time. But when she got back home, her other children and her husband were watching up along with Buddy What's His Name and the other fellows. And she said it gave her so much more reason to feel optimistic and happy when she got home, you know, after having faced all of that. That's the kind of story we get an awful lot of yeah. those kinds of stories because people love what we do. Mm -hmm. Another common one is driving across the country. And if it wasn't for your fellow's tape or your fellow's CD or your fellow's music, I don't know what we would have done, because it's the only thing that keeps the youngsters happy. 
right. the stories just get, roll on yeah. and on and on. That you know, when we do this, you know, like he's telling the story and that initiates a whole bunch and so on and so on. It just yeah. goes. For some reason, I thought about the. Uh, we were playing in the stadium. I think it was Bay Roberts area a few years ago, right? And we're about to go on. The guy's introducing us, doing a little bit of a prolonged introduction. And open comes the door, and, and this woman says, guys, I got to tell you a quick little story. My brother was driving along in Sask Saskatchewan a couple of weeks ago, and all of a sudden he sees the lights, and he gets hauled over by the, <laughs> the, the police, right? So the, the, the policeman walks up to the car and he says, sir, you were kind of swerving as you went. Is there any reason for that? And the guy says, well, I know you're not going to take this as an excuse, but he said, I, 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 I was listening to a comedy tape in my car. And the guy says, uh, so what, what was the group or what was the, uh, the comedian? It was Buddy, what's his name in the Yellow Post from Newfoundland. The guy says, you're forgiving. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan, too. And he let him off for it. So. No way. That's better so than the pothole yeah. excuse. The yammy. <laughs> so it was the yammy that did it to him. Yeah, the yammy, yeah. The yammy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, 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 that's <laughs> a good one. I'm the yammy. i got to ask you. The yammy, the mower, the chopper. Oh, if the, you were good. the set, the 454 set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if the 454 set was going to go into another gadget, what would it be? Uh, well, you see, uh, well, we got to we get to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to Mars quicker than we think we can, right? We, I, I, I deliberately destructed the 454 four barrel with uh, Frankie's mower. Yep, the goat. The goat, Frankie's goat, the mower. <laughs> um, because, well, these things come about as a collective. Right? You start writing something, you get a page, two or three pages, and then you farm it out, and, and then we go at it and see how many more descriptors we can get for going fast or making things whirl or faster, you know, bigger, and <laughs> things to go bang, clunk. And, and we ran out. We literally after four stories, and not yet before those 454 stories, there was Johnny's motorboat. Remember that one? Yes. yes. And so we had a whole other sort of thing about a fast speedboat. We would simply run out of descriptors. I transferred all the descriptors by making things go hot <laughs> and did the barbecue. Yeah. Yep. But if I was to do one more high-speed machine, I think we could approach a golf cart with a jet assist to take off engine yep. on it. And I thought about that many times. Or an elevator. Yes. Mm. An elevator's got to go up and go down, of yep. course. But, you know, going up. I was just thinking about the tallest building in the world or if you had to get to a space platform. You know how to talk about going to a space platform with yeah. an elevator yeah. now? So you could get through most of the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and then you get up, yeah, yeah now there's yeah. something that could use a couple of descriptors, eh, boy? Like a four KD engine is not going <laughs> to do it, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> if you had two or three of them, big flywheel, make yeah. the flywheel bigger. See, I have long hair. Let's get to work. <laughs> <laughs> no. See, I have long hair. I was thinking I'd like it in a, in a hair dryer, right? <laughs> Done. Now, see, yeah. now there's another he's thing. On yeah, he's onto everything. He's onto everything. Melissa, how about, how about <laughs> if you had this automatic sort of system for doing hair, which would be, you know those vegetable steamers that are just those those envelopes that lay down are right full of holes imagine something like that would go around the head and you'd vacuum the other side and then your hair would all get sucked out through the holes <laughs> but the plates could be of various lengths so that when a, a buzzer went over the top you, you, you have a varying length you know and these plates could be and just think about it melissa like you could just sit down put your quarter in and then a machine you go and then a machine then you cut it and you come on to another subject because he's getting no i'm liking this i would like the cd and the gadget so yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, would the be gadgets, perfect yeah. so there's <laughs> lots of ways to use the, yeah, yeah. the speed and uh, but we don't want to go with speed anymore because yeah. it we've hurt our brains. You know, like <laughs> trying to take it to another tangent, to another corner. Where else can we go? We've gone everywhere. So when we try now, oh, I've been here a thousand yeah. times before, and there's nowhere else to go. So when people walk up and say, guys, you got to do one on, no, not going there. Oh. <laughs> I will say that the Yammy is in the show right now. Yeah. It is. is it? The Yammy is in the show. We brought it back because we're doing the best of show. And the best yeah. of show. We started with a lot of material, didn't we? We did. We started with how many? Oh, we, just, we had double the number well, of pieces. Well, everything recorded, basically. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of wound yeah. down trying to pick out the best pieces that people have requested over the years. And Past Kevin, with his expertise of arranging everything. Yeah. So I want to know more about your process about picking songs, you know, or writing songs, uh, which you often do, of course, uh, and, and how that process goes in. And do you kind of think of a feeling you want to leave with people, or whether it's you know a funny song, whether it's an emotional song, or whether it's picking a traditional song and bringing it into your repertoire and teaching everybody about it. You How should do you talk about to that us really individually for that. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, sure. yeah if I could start. For, for me, it's uh, there's two types of songs that I write, right? And one is is inspiration, where you're struck and you get goosebumps because this feeling, this uh, compulsion, this something that really moves you, and hopefully a few lines come with it and then you realize it's time to go to work. It's wrong to let this go. 
And if you don't have time at the moment, then write down what came to you first and the feelings that you have, because certainly later on you got to work on it, right? And that one, that one comes inspirationally almost, right? You pick it up at different times when you feel a certain way and you move it ahead. The other type of song is, is like a puzzle song, like putting together a puzzle. You say, now I'm going to write a song on, uh, let's just take one for example, you know, like uh, the salt beef dinner. Mm -hmm. I'd, uh, I'd like to call a song Salt Beef Junkie. Okay, let's put one together. So you get all the thoughts and components and ideas and everything you can imagine. You get it all out there, laid out in ideas, and you put it together and you want rhyme scheme and you everything and you're creating a picture. That's entirely different from a song like Saltwater Joys that starts to pour out of you and you say, this means something. You know, I gotta work a little bit, but for the most part, it's, it, it, it's coming to you from somewhere and you're just there receiving. That's different from composing and making one, you know? So for me, it's, it's, it's usually one category or the other. Now, there, well, there really is a third. There's one that I might start and get the press with and throw it to Kevin. And Kevin will work on it a bit and throw it back to me. And, and months or years later, we got a song. So that's really a, a third category. But basically, that's how I work, you know? In my case, uh, I cannot do without traditional stuff coming into the, to the situation. Then on the other side of the coin, I had to uh, write something with regards to someone I met, what was said, where I was gathered. For instance, just yesterday, the people who was working on my daughter's house, doing some contract work, brought in a beautiful song by Loyola Hearn. Mm. And it's dealing with war veterans. It's dealing with about the Newfoundlanders going over the top. And I'm, I'm ready now to write a recitation based on that. Mm -hmm. So the inspiration yeah. to me sometimes falls on a daily basis. But you may not get time to compose it for mm -hmm. too low of a mm -hmm. period of time, you know? It's like the glow of the kerosene light. I mean, that, that took a while before we mm -hmm. got it to where it is now, you know? Yeah. My process is not that it's any different. It, it just that adds to the kind of uh, the ways we create. Now, Ray is like this too, because I know, I know Ray very well. Starts with a melody, eh? Yeah. Ray starts with a melody. Ray always starts with a melody. He, because he's this big part of the brain called <laughs> melody. Just put that big in there. <laughs> right? Yeah. That part over there in Wayne's head so called words, put yeah. that big too. Yeah. With me, it's a collection of things. Now I can sit down, and depending on the instrument I'm sitting at, if it's a piano or a guitar, I play things that make me do this. Get a rhythm in there. And after a while, I'll find that I've got ideas that I want to put the song. So there's that way of doing it too, right? So what I do is I've got a collection, I've got a bag full of ideas there mm -hmm. somewhere, and I'll pull them out and say, oh, that needs a rewrite. Or, that was an unfinished idea. Maybe that will fit here. And sometimes the things are just so diverse that they come up with a surprise. Now, it's, mm -hmm. I'm sure an awful lot of people work like that. They have things they want to pursue. They've got a whole pile of intellectual ideas over there. You've got the two areas of the brain working, and sometimes they come together because the, the music yeah. And the words don't always pair, but mm -hmm. in an awful lot of songwriters that will start like that, will start with a little tune, and you'll realize, jeepers, there was something nagging me, and I wanted to write that yeah. down. Well, isn't that's it true yeah. in yeah. Yeah. Got to Get Me Moves, boy? That's mm -hmm. kind well, of how it came together. Yeah. Well, you know, there mm -hmm. I had gone through a hunting trip. Yeah. <laughs> Next door neighbor, should I say that? <laughs> and the whole that's trip was enough. written. <laughs> but I came to Ray and Wayne. We had a jam there one time, and, and I, I sang... Ray, what I had written with the guitar. But then Ray took the thing entirely and put the melody in there because the melody is really something that was an invention of the accordion. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't get it with the guitar, see. Now, and, and somebody who plays the piano will do something else, which is quite different too. And then they'll sit there and they give you a totally different interpretation and that bends a song entirely one way or another. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, that's a good thought, Kevin. Because, yeah. you know, like it's almost as important the instruments that you work with, oh, you yes. know, it will shape the song that you do. Yeah. Like you find an awful lot of oboe players don't just don't write songs. <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't think I know any well, oboe you'll players. You'll sit down and try and play an oboe and see if it's conducive to songwriting. <laughs> um, Ray, you mentioned uh, By the Glow of the Kerosene Light, which is a beautiful song that, oh. you know, everyone loves your rendition of. But now, of course, The Once has come out with yes. just oh. a stunningly, the hauntingly oh. beautiful version as oh, well. And it's but interesting you bring them up because they uh, performed with us last summer at Grand Falls. That was summer of 15, Old Doc. 
Oh, six, oh, 16, I'm sorry. Wow. 16. Yes. Time yeah. flies. And uh, they got up and sang with, oh. It was wonderful. We all got filled up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering what, if you think that, um, you know, with groups like The Once and Matt Byrne, and there's so many right now, yeah. do you think the future of uh, kind of Newfoundland traditional music oh, is in good hands? It's just so broad oh, and big. I'm sure it is. The future Newfoundland music has exploded into all these wonderful young artists who yeah. had so much more yeah. musical privilege than ever we had, yeah. in that their exposure's been bigger. Their training has been more, just more complete. Um, when we grew up, our only exposure was through a jukebox, and you only heard what was on the jukebox. Either that or you had to go purchase records. And there was a radio somewhere, but you didn't pay much attention to a radio. That was honestly the only exposure we ever got was by listening to other people, and there wasn't that much. Nowadays, the simple, the internet revolution and the digital revolution have meant that anybody can have all the music in the world at any time yeah. for nothing. And so they can listen to the very best players in the world they can get lessons from the very best players in the world off the phone. Mm -hmm. Wild. And you think about that, what a difference that has made. You see all these terrific young instrumentalists now, and they're all better than I'll ever be. I could not work to that level. When I see young Aaron Collis, or I see wow. any one of those people, you know, in the Dardanelles, uh, or any one of those people who are playing in all those young groups, I'll say all of them, mm -hmm. and they're so great yeah, musically, yeah. Yeah. brilliant yeah. musically. Yeah. And add to that is the fact that each group is so uh, so uh, sensitive to the, the requirement of making that particular piece be theirs. And yeah. that's why I like the fact that each group got something that stands out. Yeah. And that's mm. important. Because yeah. they don't Definitely. want to sound like someone else. And also, know? too, to all of these young people who are up and coming and they're brilliant in so many ways, all, if, if there's any advice that I could offer is don't be ashamed, don't no. be afraid to express and uh, create art that relates to us and who we are. Because there are still people in Newfoundland who somehow think that it's not worthy. You know, and I just remember back in the early days of Saltwater Joys, the song, you know, when nobody knew about it. And very early after performing it probably a half dozen times, somebody said to me, well, it's a nice little song, but uh, you know, like you're wearing Newfoundland on your sleeve too strongly, tame it back a little bit, you know? We do stress that you do not go on the internet and try to download <laughs> someone else's music without paying for it. Yeah. In exactly. In, in, exactly. In the case of our oh, yeah. new DVD yeah. folks, you right have on. to realize you just can't go new taking DVD that from here. the... Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Are well, you what do you got in your hand there, Melissa? <laughs> Melissa, what is that, my dear? It is a new DVD, I think, from you guys. Um, but yeah, the, um, on the topic of keeping, you know, Newfoundland culture and, and all that alive, I know, Ray, you've been um, involved in a museum in yes. Job's Cove, right? Yes. And, and you're passionate. So do you think that it's important outside of music to keep rural culture and, and Newfoundland Very much so. I mean, you get the people actually going to those small little communities and see firsthand experience of people dressed with their aprons on, the women especially serving meals, and someone is playing accordion or fiddle in that little cozy ca atmosphere or cafe. Man, it all goes together. Yeah. And people have come to me. What have I missed all these years till I come to a place like this? Yes. You know? So. And Kevin, you're involved in an um, artist collective as well. Well, right? it's, um, <laughs> it, it's centered around a facility in Globaltown called the House of Diamonds Art Center, and that was bequeathed to the house, to the town from a very benevolent person whose name is Daryl Fry. Daryl Fry actually grew up here in St. John's, but had an uncle in Globetown. His name was Ken Diamond, and that's where mm -hmm. the name comes from. We now have Ken's property. But Daryl saw fit to uh, buy the uncle's property and, and donate it to the town. He wanted to see an art center. So he, we were called, a bunch of us who were more artistic in the town, and a bunch of uh, people who, who in some way were town leaders, and asked if we could make this work. So for 10 years now, we've been bashing away at trying to have artistic activities there at that particular place, you know? And be that concerts or workshops in visual art or be it, you know, the whole pile of things go on there. Uh, and it's also a meeting place for musicians. Uh, we have concerts, we also have uh, jam sessions there. And we also have a, an art club base there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah, that's that's been, been, I've been 10 years doing that. Wow. Yeah. And so on a, a small, I'm sure you do lots of other uh, community work as well, but on a smaller scale, you actually uh, made a diff big difference uh, in the life of one woman recently who asked you to uh, re-record a song, yes. right? So yeah, how, how that's did, great How story. did that feel? And, and what, what uh, tell us a bit about that story. Well, it was just a case where the guy who works our office and does our sales, you know, called me one afternoon and said, Wayne, we get a lot of crazy requests, don't we? And I said, we sure <laughs> do. 
And, uh, you know, they come in by the hundreds, bizarre and odd and so on and so forth. And he said, well, I got a good one, a weird one for you now. And he told me this 80-year-old lady called in and said that she, there was a particular song that she wanted played at her funeral. Uh, and he said, so which one is this? And she said, number seven on the 2-5 CD. And it's called Carry Me. She knew, you know, she had it all picked out. And uh, she said, but there's one little problem. Uh, they screwed it up. <laughs> uh, they th halfway through they picked up the tempo and and spoiled the mood and I want to play it at my funeral so I want to keep the tempo the same all the way through so I, I, I want you to tell them that I would like for them to go into the studio and re-record one copy for me and uh, and just keep it at the same tempo and Wayne said my darling that might be an awful uh, that might be quite a task I'm not <laughs> sure the boys story. can do that and she said oh Oh, I'm, I'm their biggest fan. Oh, I love them. If they only knew me, they would do it for me, right? So Wayne said, so how do we handle that one? And I said, well, you give me the phone number. I'll, I'll deal with it, right? And Kevin and Ray at the time, we'd just come back from March, and Ray was talking about when he gets home, he got to this, 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 and Kevin says, well, I got this and this and the diamond outs and all these outside of stuff. And as time ticked, I was bothered by the fact that we couldn't do it. And I said, well, if that lady passes, I'm going to be hurt for a long yeah. period of time. So I was in St. John's for a weekend, and my, my son has a little studio in his basement and so on and so forth. So I went in and laid down all the basics and so on, and he put instruments on it and some vocals and so on and so forth. So three weeks later, I called up this lady, <laughs> and she said, oh, my God, you call I thought you had it forgot. No, she said, I know I knows you fellas wouldn't forget me. I know you wouldn't gonna let me down. And I said, could you give me an address and all this sort of stuff? So I got the address from, from her and, and so on. And uh, instead of putting it in the mail, I decided, my wife and I decided to drive over and tap on her door and give it to her. And I'll never, I'll never forget the feeling, you know? No. Uh, you know it, was just, it was just so nice. And she was so grateful and so pleased. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that feeling, you gave her that feeling. You've been giving audiences across Newfoundland and Labrador and across the country that feeling uh, of happiness and, and contentment and proud to be a Newfoundlander for so long. I want to know, um, outside of music and all that stuff, uh, Kevin, for you, what makes you smile? What makes you happy? Uh, my three daughters. I think if there's one thing that I did right, if I want to look upon anything that I did right, I think it's my three daughters. And I suppose... That always makes me happy, being in their company. But I have a number of other pursuits, you know, things that I do for hobbies, and my life is, thankfully, it's got a broad palette of things that I, I love to dabble in. I like to dabble in visual art and painting and like that, and I like to, and I also like to uh, record, uh, I record for hobby. Uh, and then I like to do outdoor things, gardening and hunting and fishing and, you know, getting wood. And, and then I have a workshop, and I like to be in the workshop. So, you know, my life was pretty rich and complex, and um, I think I don't like to be unhappy. And if I'm unhappy at any time, then I gotta search for the reason, eh? And get rid of it. Well, good to know. Is you happy? The answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. you gotta be happy. <laughs> you gotta be happy. Yeah. So I know you have a little case. message you wanna give out about your, uh, your DVD, I understand. So, uh, oh, you indeed. See this, you see this? Why don't you take it away? <laughs> well, this particular message here. <laughs> I mean, this is a, this particular DVD. There are a lot of sinners amongst us who will try and download that from That's the hinder. That's what I was alluding to earlier. So yes. shameful. Yeah. They will, and theirs is the worst sin of all. This is not to be downloaded. If you want to do the right thing, you pay for that. So what kind of a sin is it, though? That's a blind sin. The blind it? sin. The blind yeah. sin, Kevin. They do not realize <laughs> that they are sinning because they are doing it blindly. Blind. And we have, a, we have a little chorus we want to sing yes. so that everybody out there in the congregation will do the right thing. They will march right up to the merchandise table yeah. or the merchandise disc down at Fred's Records or someplace like that. Or online. Or online. Or name.com. And buy it. We will sing the chorus together, will we? We will yes. do that, sir. Mm, I'm not a sinner, I won't be tempted to try and download the show for free. I won't be falling into temptation, I will purchase the DVD. Yes, I will purchase the DVD, I will do the right thing, and I will be a, a saint, not a sinner. Hallelujah for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. <laughs> thank that? you so yeah. much. Perfect. Message received. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks so much for coming in and looking oh, yeah. forward thanks to your show this week. Thanks. thanks. For Pleasure being us. here. Thanks. Thank you. Give me an axe, will you? I want to split that junk open some bad. <laughs> 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 no, we need it for the next show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be right back after this. What a nice little trip down memory lane. I can remember being a kid and going to a Buddy What's His Name show in the rink, the arena in Whitburn when I was small. And I remember I had this like bright orange trucker style cat with their logo on it and one, maybe not all, but one of their signatures. And I'm certain somewhere my mother has that in like the shoe box of life. Anyway, I've always been a fan, and Melissa, uh, we miss you around here, but I guess you're doing all right these days. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Justice. And I'm Nia. And we believe dreams fuel revolutions. That's why we're engaging with Canadian icons and the causes they support. Join us for these inspiring conversations and find out how you can be revolutionary. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning. We all know it takes a team effort in any sport and with any challenge. You can be a part of the winning team.